Circuit Python day, we code and play the open source way. Circuit Python day, we code and play the open source way. We code and play. Welcome to Circuit Python day. I'm here today with Brent, who is Brent. Do you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, sure. My name is Brent Rubel. I work on uh, Interfruit IO and all of our IoT related things. I've worked on a lot of the Circuit Python guides. Um, you read a guide that involves like a feather connecting to the internet. I've probably written a page for it. Um, I work on Adafruit IO and Whippersnapper, which is our like no code IoT platform, but we're not talking about Whippersnapper today. We're just talking <laughs> about, uh, IoT, Adafruit IO. And then Trevor and I have been working really closely the last two weeks on iOS apps, which we're going to get to. That's right. And we decided to do a stream today, uh, discussing IoT, Adafruit IO iOS development and a bunch more. Absolutely. And uh, I'm Trevor. I am the uh, iOS de uh, developer here at Adafruit, and I am basically in charge of developing uh, iOS apps and everything that, go that comes along with that. Um, so yeah, anyway. All right. So without further ado, let's get started, Brent. Cool. Uh, we're going to talk about it's gonna be a short stream, but we're going to talk about what Adafruit IO is, mm -hmm. uh, getting started with it. and uh, circuit Python, uh, common problems that we see, uh, I do a lot of customer support stuff, uh, for the week, answer customer support like three times a week. And we generally see the same patterns of stuff. So if you can catch a problem early, it's always good. Um, and maybe there are some things people haven't thought about. And then Trevor, you're going to do like the mobile apps, uh, right. for circuit Python projects. We're both going to talk about community contributions to Adafruit IO and circuit Python. So like our favorite projects of the past year. Right. And then I'm going to talk about some cool stuff we're doing behind the scenes in Adafruit IO as well um, this year. Uh, for background, Trevor and I work in the same department. We actually have always worked in the same department. We right. used to work in the factory together, <laughs> that's, and that's right. now we're both in engineering. Uh, that's right. So this will be a fun stream. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about what is Adafruit IO. Do you have a Circuit Python project and? You're using a board that has Wi-Fi connectivity uh, available, or even Ethernet, um, and you want to make it talk to the internet or connect it to the internet. Adafruit IO is a pretty good way to go. The alternatives are you're spinning up a server on your local computer, which is great for privacy, um, but it's also very difficult. And you're using Circuit Python, which is mostly a beginner programming language. Uh, you don't want the overhead of building your own server and graphing interface and connecting all the web related parts. You just want to get your projects online. And that's what Adafruit IO pretty much gives you. Uh, also for free, um, you can send data from a circuit Python device to IO. You can graph it super nicely. We have charts, uh, we have graphs, um, and then we also have things like sliders and buttons and toggles that you can control your project from the internet uh, locally. And you can use Adafruit IO from anywhere in the world. You can share your dashboards with like these, this is type of a dashboard. You can share like buttons and interfaces and have like someone from across the world click a button. We have a few guides on that. And you can also view things. So like, I guess greenhouse projects are pretty hot this summer. So if you have like a greenhouse, you can view it while you're on vacation or from your house and you don't even have to step into it. Um, so how do I use this? Like I have like this feather, uh, what is this? ESP32 S2 board. And I really want to connect it to Adafruit IO. So to get started, we have a CircuitPython library. Um, there's lots of libraries that exist for CircuitPython. Uh, we have one for Adafruit IO. Um, and it provides an interface for the two APIs, which are how you talk to Adafruit IO. So we provide MQTT API, which is a way to uh, publish and subscribe to feeds, which contain data and it's super, uh, low latency. And it's really good for projects like any type of streaming data. Um, you want to send data across the internet, uh, um, and you don't want to constantly poll for it. We also have an HTTP API where it's like, you want to check the status of something every 15 minutes. Um, the HTTP API works perfectly. And the CircuitPython library is awesome. 
However, we have a lot of users who also don't want to use the CircuitPython library and are more hackery and want to do everything themselves. And like, you can do it. Um, the CircuitPython library abstracts a lot of things and we've built it to pretty much abstract everything at this point. Um, you just interface with it through code. But if you don't want to do that, um, Adafruit IO provides an MQTT API. And then we have this wonderful library that I wrote a long time ago called uh, CircuitPython MQTT. And that allows you to uh, connect like the MQTT interface and IO to uh, this library and you can write code uh, that's a little bit lower level, um, not so abstracted to use the two for your projects. Then we have an HTTP API and then requests so you can send or get data from IO. Um, Trevor's uses a bunch and like the HTTP API is nice because you can use it not just with CircuitPython, but also with like, for you, it's like iOS apps as well. Uh, for a lot of people, it's like a website sharing data to IO um, or like server like interfaces. So um, there's a lot of different ways to connect to IO uh, from CircuitPython and going from like easy to hard. And it's really like pretty easy. We have a lot of projects on it. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, I recommend it. And yeah, so next problem is like, <laughs> People get stuck, um, which is great because, like, uh, I hang out in the forums for Adafruit IO. I also hang out in the support email um, inbox for IO. And we see a lot of common problems with uh, people building projects. And a lot of these problems we can resolve through code, right? Like, we can make interfaces that are easier to use and the guides that are better and explain everything. But also there are some fundamental things that people run into um, that we can't explain and are easier to explain uh, like on the internet um, through like a dialogue between like an Adafruit support engineer and a customer. So the main thing is like, I wanna build this project, what board do I use? Um, and I think we have a guide on this now on the learning system, but our answer is always it depends. Um, Depends on the project requirements, uh, primarily the cost, the form factor, your flash storage, and your uh, processing speed. So, like, overall, um, the ESP32 series is really good for CircuitPython projects. Um, we've used it extensively. There's a bunch of chips and some more coming out. I think we just put the new C6 Feather in the store last week. Uh, there's lots of different families of chips, uh, different uh, speeds, different interfaces different like peripherals exposed and generally Adafruit sells three form factors um like a metro which is like Arduino like and then the feather which is smaller than uh the cutie pie which is the smallest so I recommend picking up an ESP32 or newer for using Adafruit IO with circuit python um one of the things to remember is that like you do connect securely over SSL so that requires the chip memory to be larger and you need to be able to store uh, certificates. So <laughs> this is kind of like a pre-flight checklist. Um, I'll go through it. Uh, the first problem we see is people aren't using the latest version of CircuitPython. Uh, the CircuitPython team works to fix a lot of problems and they do it really quickly. But often people use the version of CircuitPython like we'll ship a Pi portal to someone and this has an old version of CircuitPython on it. And the first thing you should do is update the version of CircuitPython sitting on this board, the latest version. Um, that also includes libraries. So um, CircuitPython libraries differ between CircuitPython versions. And you wanna make sure that the libraries you have match the version of CircuitPython you have. That should take care of a lot of problems. Um, the next one is using a test program to connect. So we have a lot of customers who will build their entire project very quickly, which is great. And they'll put it in a birdhouse or somewhere is really hard to get to, maybe an occupancy center, like they'll put it on a wall and then they'll run into problems. And then they'll have to debug the problems after the project is mounted on the wall. And it's like, you got to take the project off the wall first. So, um, 
and they're like running into like network connectivity issues i've noticed so like uh on all the learning system guides we have the step called internet connect and it just ensures that you can connect to your wi-fi network before you connect to adafruit io and a lot of people will try to connect their project to adafruit io they'll say like this project isn't working i'll ask them what's wrong they'll say it can't connect and then now you're stuck with two issues can't connect to internet or it can't connect to io so like going through all of these in order is super useful for the success of your project it also reduces like the time you need to spend debugging the internet code and i would love it if your code just works like out of the box it's like what it's intended to do so like this is almost like a pre-flight checklist of like things to do before you put your project up like on the wall or in the birdhouse. Uh, the next thing's network connectivity issues. You need to ensure the network's 2.4 gigahertz, not five gigahertz. There's a lot of new routers, like my Fios router ships with like a five gigahertz mode. You can turn that off. You can also use two separate networks. Like we have a guest network that uses uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And then the main home network is five. So that's a way to split the two. Um, these issues are really hard to debug, uh, especially with customers um, and people like using our products and other products connecting. It's a really tough one. And it's one of the first things I ask somebody. Network uh, credentials are incorrect is the next thing to check. Like CircuitPython projects, we store everything in a secrets.toml file. Settings.toml, we changed it recently over the past year and the network SSID could be wrong. The network password could be wrong and they just can't connect to the network. And it says they can't connect to either Adafruit IO. So the way around that is if you still can't connect to the network and you've tried both of these things, your network's 2.4 gigahertz, you have the right credentials, you should try a different network. Um, can you use your phone? Like my phone does the Wi-Fi. Uh, hotspot out of it. Uh, most iPhones do. If you're at an office during the day and they don't mind, I don't want to like piss off any IT people. But if they don't mind, or you're an educator and you're in school, you could bring your project into school or work or whatever and try it on an additional network. Um, or you have a friend or family member. Like sometimes it's just like I'm using a weird mesh setup and. It's just not working properly. And then they try it and after days of debugging and it works beautifully. Um, so these are just steps to do in order that will increase the likeliness that you'll see IO connected, Wi-Fi connected on your project. The last one is the IO connection issues we see. Um, there's really only two things to fix this. Uh, IO does go down, but it's very, very rare. We have a very high uptime. Um, so if you can't connect, I guess the first thing to check is, is IO online. Uh, and if it is, chances are it didn't go down. And there's some other externality uh, related to this. So first things to check is your like username and your IO key are correct. And the IO key can get regenerated um, often. Um, you can manually trigger to get regenerated. If you share code on GitHub, we will regenerate your key if it includes the key. Um, for security purposes, so you need to make sure these credentials, just like Wi-Fi, are correct. And then also you need to use, again, like the latest libraries. So like with all of this, your project should be running really well. Um, and then you just have to worry about the CircuitPython code, which is like pretty, it's like the better part of this. Like I don't, when people get stuck and like their project hasn't even started working yet, it's really like unfortunate to see and also kind of sad because it's like they haven't gotten to like the really fun stuff. They haven't seen their data go into Adafruit IO and get logged and they haven't pressed a button on their um, like dashboard and done anything. So it's like get over that hump and try to get things working first. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so uh, the other issue is uh, you can get throttle errors and you might have gotten these while working on like development stuff, Trevor. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. there are rate limits, and they're uh, mostly for us uh, to protect against people hitting the server really quickly. Uh, IO3, we're pretty generous. We get 30 data points per minute, plus we do 60, and then you can also pay to boost it every month. Um, 
these limits are across the account. So if you have like an iPhone talking to IO and sending data, and you also have a feather talking to IO sending data, they share this limitation. So you have to like consider this like a pool of 30 data points per minute and you have to figure out how you're going to allocate it. The other issues right. is like before building your project, you need to consider how long you're storing your data. Um, so like we do 60, uh, 30 days for free, which is a whole month and then two months for IO plus, plus you can boost it out. Um, and a lot of people do, which is kind of nice because they can really keep their data. If they're running like an experiment for a few months, if you change your mind, you can upgrade to IO plus. So like, let's say you're at day 25 of your soil sensor and you're like, this is great. I want data for two months though, to see trends. Um, you can upgrade, but on day 31, you can't upgrade because the data is removed. So you need to make that decision um, oh, yeah. to expand your limits, but like either your rate limits or your storage limits before that happens. Um, and also consider how many feeds. Uh, IO3 gives 10 data feeds. Uh, IO plus is unlimited. Um, and you can build your project and scale up. That's usually what people do is they get the free account and then they'll buy the pro account. And then if you're totally stuck, you're still stuck, you don't know what these data limits are, you're having problems, like anything, um, we have support engineers who are here to help, uh, io.adafruit.com slash support. It'll be me or someone else from the IO team. We don't have like, in, we have an external support team, but like you're usually going to get somebody who works on the project directly when you have issues with CircuitPython and Adafruit IO. Yeah, so I hope I got through what I wanted to. Uh, that's yeah. what I wanted to talk about uh, to for CircuitPython Day, pretty much. Very cool. And Trevor, Very cool. you want to talk about our mobile apps? Yes, I will talk about our mobile apps. A lot of folks don't know that we have mobile apps, but we have plenty of them. Um, we have uh, some of them just catered specifically for our Circuit Python projects, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. And our main goal with when we develop our apps is to make it as easy as possible to use, which also relates, which also kind of like makes the apps very lightweight, but it's lightweight because we want you to be able to pick it up, use it right away, put it back down, pick it back up, whatever, you know. Um, so yeah, um, so that's kind of like our main goal behind our apps. We want to make sure that they're super, super easy to use to make coding as easy and fun as possible. Um, uh, and that's why we kind of developed um, our first app, or one of our first apps uh, is uh, File Glider. Uh, File Glider is an app that allows you to manage, browse, and edit your CircuitPython files right from your phone, which is pretty amazing. Um, this kind of like removes the need of having your computer on you. Let's say you're at, at like a convention or you're in the classroom or wherever. You can basically like, like as long as you have, as long as your project has like power of some sort, then you can basically like program on the go, debug on the go. And, you know, like, I think that's, that's a very like useful tool to have. And with that, um, let me see what else. Right. And, uh, Basically, like it makes it super accessible, being that you can communicate with your uh, Adafruit board via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So you can basically, like, yeah. I mean, I think that kind of speaks for itself. It makes it super easy to um, to connect to it and just basically just start up and get going with uh, programming on the go. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see the next. Um, so that was the fog ladder. Uh, uh, app and you know, like we understand that you know, like sometimes you don't want just a file management app. Um, with PyLeap, you're actually able to um, basically transfer entire like projects, pre made projects from your phone straight to your device. So, I have a little video prepared for that. Here at Adafruit, we've designed PyLeap as an asset to all electronics makers. PyLeap lets you send code files and assets directly to your Adafruit devices using Bluetooth Low Energy and Wi-Fi. Choose from a selection of projects we've added to the PyLeap app and watch as PyLeap transfers entire projects to your Adafruit device. PyLeap has a rainbow animation project ready to go. Let's try it out. 
Simply press the Run button to download and transfer your selected project to your device. Whether you're an experienced maker or just getting started, Pilot takes the hassle out of learning, creating, and innovating at your speed. So that was the video, and basically it shows you how you can easily just uh, choose a project and transfer it directly to your uh, Bluetooth device or Wi-Fi enabled device using uh, PyLeap, which is pretty amazing being that there is no code that you need to like bother yourself with. You can just transfer your files over and that's it. And then also you can use FileGlider to uh, modify and move your files as you see fit, which is amazing. And both FileGlider and uh, PyLeap are uh, available for iOS, which is pretty amazing. Uh, let's see what other apps we have. We have Bluefruit Connect, which is one of our oldest apps, but one of our, uh, it's the app that has like pretty much like the most features in it, which is pretty amazing when it comes down to Bluetooth connectivity. Um, basically, uh, Bluefruit Connect provides uh, iOS and Apple devices. I'm so sorry, app, iOS and Android devices. Uh, with a variety of tools to communicate with your Bluefruit LE, uh, Blue, Bluefruit LE devices, uh, which makes the app pretty versatile. Um, so it has a ton of features, uh, One of the, a few of them being the UART terminal mode for basic uh, like hex and string communication. Uh, there's a MQTT mode, which allows um, integration with MQTT TT brokers for real-time data exchange. There's a plotter in there. There's a, a controller in there that uh, basically um, it basically you can send like uh, like inputs to your device. So let's say you have like a robot of some sort and you're able to kind of like move it around as much as uh, you want. I have a video that's going to play right now about that. Hey, my name is Trevor, and I'm an iOS developer here at Adafruit. And today, we'll be going over a few features in the Bluefruit Connect app. Bluefruit Connect has many creation tools that can help bring your projects to life. I recently built a Bluetooth remote control car using the Bluetooth Connect app. This car is powered by an Adafruit Feather NR52840 and a DC motor Featherwing. Using the gamepad feature in Bluefruit Connect makes driving this car feel natural. Another standout feature that I often use is the data plotter. This allows you to visualize sensor data within the app. The Adafruit Clue comes loaded with many sensors, such as the BMP280 temperature sensor. Here, you can see the humidity and temperature data displayed on the Clue TFT. Bluefruit Connect also has a UART terminal mode. This allows you to transmit and receive raw text data directly to your device. Now, I use this feature to change text displayed on my LED matrix panel using the Featherwing and NRF52 A40 Express board. Bluefruit Connect also offers convenient features for robotics projects, easy LED color change. You can also send images directly to your board, such as the Adafruit Clue or the TFT Gizmo for Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Bluefruit Connect is more than an app. It's a tool, a companion, and a catalyst for your creativity. So what are you waiting for? Discover the world of wireless technologies with Bluefruit Connect by Adafruit. That's basically Bluefruit Connect. It's a, it's a very hefty app. Uh, and for our final app, we are going to talk about It's a Snap, which is our most recent app. I've worked with Brent on this app. Um, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, it basically uh, takes your IoT projects a bit further and kind of bridges the gap between Adafruit IO and the Apple ecosystem, um, where you, you're, you're able to do like uh, some automation within your IoT apps. Um, yeah, uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Um, all you need to do is just like log in to your It's a Snap uh, app, and then you can just, you can, well, within your It's a Snap app, you can also like send and receive uh, uh, data from your Adafruit IO account, um, Adafruit IO feeds, um, you can monitor them. But, but besides that, you can also add uh, automation tasks within the uh, um, Apple shortcuts app, where you're able to kind of do some 
pretty cool things that we'll talk more about later. But that's basically a, a brief overview of the iOS apps that we have for CircuitPython. Yeah, I love it's a snap. Um, it's really cool. Like we can do stuff that for CircuitPython projects we couldn't previously do. Mm -hmm. Like if you wanted to do something like pull up your shades on yeah. <laughs> like sunrise or pull them down on sunset, um, yeah. like your iPhone has that ability. So you can just send data to a different video feed. Then your circuit Python device with like a motor can pull it up or pull it down. Uh, yeah. We used the GPS stuff last week together. Right. Uh, to right. build a project that tells you where you are. Absolutely. Uh, you can use like, instead of like digging into an API like Apple Music or Spotify, like you have over here, you can just send the value to a feed and display it like on a screen. Like, yeah, that's huge. These are things we've wanted to do for a while. Yeah. And they're pretty... really, really difficult. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a pretty simple uh, like I like, I like to call it like a recipe. Like you just need to know like okay, well, what's the first thing I want to do? I want to take my song data, and uh, with that song data, take it, send it to Adafruit IO, and then like once you, I don't know, you could have like a some kind of like um of this a display or of some sort, and you can just display like particular data specific specific for you know like uh, whatever situations come by. But yeah, yeah, I love uh, this snap. It's a really good app. We'll do our Circuit Python project from 2023, 2024. Um, I write the IO newsletter. Uh, it comes out every month. It's like our IoT newsletter and covers everything. It's not just IO. Um, so we pulled some projects. So this one recent, uh, John did this two weeks ago. It's a grill thermometer. Uh, Trevor, I don't know if you've been grilling this summer. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have too. <laughs> I finally got a new one. My one last year, I rusted out. And it was really Ooh. bad. Oh, no. um, it's on me though. I, I didn't cover it properly and uh, it developed a lot of rust, oh, but man. this year it's covered and it's working. So like, awesome. if you want to do a barbecue and I have to go like in the house and back to the barbecue a lot. And this sends the measurements to Adafruit IO. So you could like view it from the pool or inside the house. Mm. Love this project it uses BLE and mm. it like sends data from this like Bluetooth thermometer thing this little box which has a feather in it which intercepts the measurements and then sends it out to io great project great circuit python project um okay. i'm going to probably build this this year uh this is an iot bird feeder with a camera we came out with the memento board this year as well uh for an ada box uh this project captures birds that you view on a feeder dashboard this was a collab between liz no pedro and me and uh I think they got like pictures of like cool squirrels and stuff out of it, but it's a really good circuit Python project and something we've wanted to do for a while, but we just didn't have, uh, like, uh, the camera interface, uh, and the Wi-Fi with the camera to do it. This is SMS texting on a matrix, which might change depending on how shortcuts works with it's a snap. Mm. I haven't tried it yet, mm -hmm. but this past year we added SMS integration for IO plus if you pay for IO plus. You can send data to IO from texting. You can also send data. Um, you can pull data off of an ADA for IO feed. Like if you have a temperature monitor uh, looking at like a nursery's temperature where your kid is, you can like text it and get the temperature. Um, works with Circuit Python. There's no data plan. There's no cellular hardware. Um, it just works over Wi-Fi. So this one you added. This is my. This is uh, your project. project. Yes, this is my project. Uh, basically, uh, it's a uh, it's a music display tracker, and I use it to snap, and I love it. Um, basically, what it does is uh, it to snap uh, uses uh, the Apple shortcuts to send my uh, like the current song that I'm playing right now to Adafruit IO, and then this. Matrix Portal S3 basically makes a network call and uh, grabs that that information and displays it on this LED panel. Right now, I am listening to Utara Hekiru, uh, Simple and Clean from the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack, which is nice. what if I love Kingdom Hearts. Good game. Yeah, I love it. And, and then next, this project you also did, I think, right? Yes, this project I did as well. It's basically like a digital. Uh, it's a digital, a digital clock display on the ESP32 S3. And I basically like, ported that project into this S3 using the uh, PyLeap app, which was super simple. And are you going to, oh, there it is. Boom. It is 12. Oh, two. Oh, two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I love that project. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, so thanks for joining us for Circuit Python Day. Um, I had a good time. Did you? I loved it. It was a great time. Yeah. And awesome. enjoy the rest of the streams for the rest of the day. Bye. Nice. See ya.